Good morning. I am Silojna Singh. Today we will talk about global warming. Before we talk about global warming, let us try to understand what is greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect has been derived from a phenomena that occurs in a greenhouse. Now, what is a greenhouse? My dear students, have you ever seen a greenhouse? A greenhouse looks like a small glass house and it is used for growing plants, especially during winter. In a greenhouse, the glass panel of which the greenhouse is made up let the light in under light ko jane deta hai but does not allow heat to escape lekin heat ko bahar nahi jane deta therefore the greenhouse warms up very much like inside a car that has been parked in the sun for a few hours जब हम कुछ देर के लिए कार को बाहर धूप में पार कर देते हैं तो उसके अंदर का वातावरण एकदम से गर्म हो जाता है दैट इज ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट द ग्रीन हाउस इफेक्ट इज ए नेचुरल फिनोमिना एंड इट इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हीटिंग ऑफ आर सरफेस एंड एटमोसफियर नाउ डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू वुड बी सरप्राइज टू नो that without greenhouse effect the average temperature at surface of earth would have been very low that is minus 18 degree celsius rather than the present average of 15 degree celsius that means without greenhouse effect life on earth could have been impossible the atmospheric cover around the earth acts like that window glass panel this window glass panel allows most of the solar radiations to enter the earth surface but it does not allow the long wave infrared radiations which are emitted by the earth to escape in स्पेस जो लॉन्ग वेव इंफ्रा रेड रेडिएशन अर्थ पर आती हैं जो एटमोसफेरिक कवर है वह उनको बाहर स्पेस में जाने नहीं देता जिसकी वजह से हमारा पृथ्वी पर तापमान बढ़ जाता है द आउट गोइंग लॉन्ग वेव इंफ्रा रेड रेडिएशन आर एब्जॉर्ड बाय द ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस डियर स्टूडेंट्स यू सी इन द डायग्राम ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज एब्जॉर्ब लॉन्ग वेव रेडिएशन फ्रॉम द अर्थ एंड एमिटेड अगेन टूवर्ड्स द अर्थ सो द साइकिल कंटिन्यूज टिल द अर्थ सर्फेस हैज नो लॉन्ग वेव रेडिएशन टू एमिट दीज ग्रीन हाउस गैसेज आर नॉर्मली प्रेजेंट इन द एटमोसफियर नाउ द एटमोसफियर रेडिएट part of this energy back to the earth now this downward flux of the radiations is called greenhouse flux we mentioned the term greenhouse gases which absorb the long wave infrared radiations now what are those greenhouse gases carbon dioxide nitrogen peroxide methane and chlorofluorocarbon are the greenhouse gases they make a blanket over the earth which control the escape of heat from the earth surface to outer space so that earth can be maintained warm and hospitable and that phenomena is referred to as the greenhouse effect now why do we build a greenhouse a greenhouse is built to facilitate the cultivation propagation 
and protection of young seedlings and delicate plants. Now in this glass pan greenhouse the roof and walls which are made up of the glass. The greenhouse is perfectly designed to maintain temperature, to regulate temperature, humidity, soil moisture and light and it also control insect pest and weeds. Now you see in the picture this is a greenhouse built in the garden where plants will be nourished according to our need, according to our requirement where we can maintain, where we can regulate the temperature, humidity, soil moisture, light etc. inside the greenhouse. Now there is one IPCC report or the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reports that there is a trend in the increase in concentration of greenhouse gases since pre-industrial times. Pre-industrial times ke baad यह रिपोर्ट किया गया है कि ग्रीनहाउस गैसेस की मात्रा में बढ़ोतरी हो रही है। तो ग्रीनहाउस गैसेस कौन सी हैं? कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड, मीथेन, नाइट्रोजन पारऑक्साइड, क्लोरोफ्लोरो कार्बन। Now let us see how the greenhouse effect actually works, how it is produced. The greenhouse effect results from the interaction between sunlight and layer of greenhouse gases which are present in the earth's atmosphere which extends up to 100 kilometer above the earth's surface. Now you know sunlight is composed of a range of radiant energies which make the solar spectrum. Solar spectrum includes visible light, infrared light, gamma rays, x-rays and ultraviolet rays. When the sun's radiations reaches the earth's atmosphere, 25 percent of the energy is reflected back into space. By whom? By clouds and other atmospheric particles and about 20 percent of the energy is absorbed in the atmosphere. For example, gas molecules present in the uppermost layer of the atmosphere absorb the sun's gamma rays and x-rays. The ultraviolet radiations produced by the suns are absorbed by the ozone layer. Ozone layer is located between 19 to 48 kilometer distance above the earth surface. Now dear students let us see are there other factors also which will affect the greenhouse effect? Yes, there are aerosols also known as particulates. Aerosols or particulates are airborne particles which absorb, scatter and reflect radiations back into space. Now clouds, wind blown dust that is traced that means that comes from the erupting volcanoes are examples of natural aerosols. Human activities for example burning of fossil fuels and slash and burn forming techniques also contribute additional aerosols to the atmosphere. Now you have understood what are aerosols. Now let us see what is the function of the aerosols here. Aerosols are not a heat trapping greenhouse gas but they do affect the transfer of heat energy radiated from the earth to the space. The effect of aerosols on climate change is debated that means 
कुछ हमारे वैज्ञानिक कहते हैं कि एरोसोल्स का क्लाइमेट पर प्रभाव पड़ता है और कुछ वैज्ञानिक कहते हैं कि एरोसोल्स का क्लाइमेट के ऊपर कोई प्रभाव नहीं पड़ता बट साइंटिस्ट बिलीव दैट लाइट कलर्ड एरोसोल्स कूल द अर्थ सरफेस वाइल डार्क कलर्ड एरोसोल्स हीट द अर्थ सरफेस द इंक्रीज इन ग्लोबल टेम्परेचर इन द लास्ट सेंचुरी इज लोअर देन मैनी साइंटिस्ट प्रेडिक्टेड वाई बिकॉज दे टुक इन टू कंसिडरेशन इंक्रीजिंग लेवल ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड मीथेन नाइट्रोस ऑक्साइड एंड फ्लोरिनेटेड कंपाउंड बट डिड नॉट टेक इन टू अकाउंट द इफेक्ट ऑफ एरोसोल्स नाउ लेट एस सी वट आर द इफेक्ट ऑफ ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस ड्यू टू इंक्रीज ऑफ ग्रीन हाउस गैसेस इन द एटमोसफियर it has the following effects first of all there will be carbon dioxide fertilization there will be global warming there will be depletion of ozone in the stratosphere first of all let us talk about carbon dioxide fertilization effect in the usa in a laboratory mona loa laboratory reported that if there is increase in the concentration of the carbon dioxide there will be increase in the photosynthesis atmosphere co2 increases about 30% by the growth of many c3 plants when conditions are favorable conditions of water nutrients light temperature in the short term so the response of plants to increase concentration of carbon dioxide is known as co2 fertilization effect due to increase of carbon dioxide we talked just now the rate of photosynthesis will increase and stomatal conductance will decrease as a result of which the rate of transpiration will be reduced consequently water use efficiency will increase under natural conditions the beneficial effect of increased carbon dioxide may not be realized actually why because there is negative effect of global warming otherwise due to increased concentration of carbon dioxide there will be increase in the rate of photosynthesis so that is the positive effect of increased concentration of co2 now you see here this is a controlled environment of a greenhouse gas which provides an ideal conditions for plant research here a scientist is investigating the hardness of the amber sweet oranges now let us discuss global warming what is global warming global means around the world the increase in global mean temperature due to increased greenhouse effect is called global warming now we see in this diagram the factors which are responsible for contribution of different greenhouse gases the percentage of carbon dioxide is 60% nitrogen peroxide 6% chlorofluorocarbon is 14% and methane is 20% now let us see what will be the effect of global warming effect on weather and climate the average temperature of earth may increase from 1.4 to 5.6 degree celsius by the year 2100 sea level change will be increased will be raised by 1 to 2 mm per year there will be effect on range of species distribution distribution of the vegetation will extend 
from 250 to 600 kilometer towards the pole with a global rise in temperature by 2 to 5 degree Celsius during 21st century. It will affect the production of food. Increased temperature will cause eruption of plant diseases and pest and vast growth of the weeds will be controlled. We see in the Mount Everest in our country, Khumbu glacier has retreated over 5 kilometers since 1953. There is Tanshan mountain, it is present in the China. Its ice has been reduced by one fourth in the past 40 years. In Antarctica, 1994 kilometer Larsen ice shelf has disintegrated in January 1995. More than 1 million plants and animals, they are likely to become extinct by 2050. A single trans-Atlantic flight by a jet plane releases about 70 tons of carbon dioxide and chlorofluorocarbon, nitrogen oxide and methane. In India, thermal power plant produces more than 50 million tons of carbon dioxide each year. So, these were the examples which add to the greenhouse gases. Now, let us see the negative impact of greenhouse. The polar ice caps will melt and will add to near about 200 feet of water on the surface of all the oceans. North America will be warmer and drier while North and East Africa, Middle East, India, West Australia, they will be warmer and wetter. Grain production will be reduced. India's annual monsoon rains may be stopped. Deserts are likely to increase. One third of the global forest, world forest might be lost forever and chances of hurricane and cyclones and flood will be more and the most vulnerable area will be cost of Gujarat, Mumbai, Kerala and Delta of Kaveri. Now let us talk about depletion of ozone layer. In 1956 to 1970, thickness of ozone layer on Antarctica varied from 250 to 325 Dobson unit. What is Dobson unit? Dobson unit is the unit of measurement for the thickness of ozone layer. Then thickness was sharply reduced to 225 Dobson unit in 1979 and then it was reduced to 136 in 1985 and then again it was reduced to 94 Dobson unit in 1994. We can see it in the diagram. The decline of ozone layer thickness is known as ozone hole. It was first reported over Antarctica in 1985. The concentration of ozone layer is between 20 to 26 kilometer above sea level. The thickness of ozone layer varies from 0 to 2.9 centimeter above the equator and 0 to 40 centimeter on plains in winter. This layer acts as ozone shielding or ozone protecting layer which provide protection to the earth 
and which provide protection to the biota or living organism present on the earth from the harmful radiations. Main pollutants which cause the destruction in ozone layer are chlorofluorocarbon, methane and nitrogen peroxide. We have talked about it earlier also and the most damaging effect is the effect of chlorofluorocarbon. Why? Why the chlorofluorocarbon is more dangerous? Because it produces active chlorine radical in the presence of ultraviolet radiations. Now you see here in the diagram, this is the ozone layer present on the Antarctica. Ozone hole is the area above Antarctica. It is shown in purple color where ozone layer is the thinnest. Ozone thickness is given in Dobson unit we talked just now and ozone hole over Antarctica develops each year between the late August and early October. Now let us see how the ozone depletion in the stratosphere in the upper part of the atmosphere take place. My dear students, you have studied in the chemistry textbooks of 11th class about bad ozone and good ozone. Bad ozone is formed in the lower atmosphere which is harmful for the plants and animals and there is good ozone also. This ozone is found in the upper part of the atmosphere which is called the stratosphere and it acts as a shield which absorb ultraviolet radiations from the sun. UV rays or ultraviolet radiations, they are highly injurious to living organisms because DNA and proteins of living organisms, they are broken by the ultraviolet rays which are absorbed by the DNA and proteins present in the living organisms. How it breaks them? How it breaks the DNA and protein present in the living organism? High energy chemical bond which is present in these molecules. The thickness of the ozone is measured in Dobson unit we have talked earlier also. How do we measure it? We consider the presence of ozone in a column of air from the ground to the top of the atmosphere. Ozone gas is continuously formed by the action of UV rays on molecular oxygen and it is also degraded into molecular oxygen in the stratosphere. What is the formula of molecular oxygen? O2 and formula of ozone is O3. So, there should be a balance between production and degradation of ozone in the stratosphere. What has happened last? The balance has been disturbed due to enhancement of ozone degradation by the chlorofluorocarbon. From where the chlorofluorocarbon comes in the atmosphere? The chlorofluorocarbon find its use in the refrigerators. Now chlorofluorocarbon which is discharged from the refrigerator in the lower part of the atmosphere, it moves upward and reaches stratosphere. In the stratosphere, UV rays act on chlorofluorocarbon and release chlorine radical. This chlorine radical degrades ozone and releases molecular oxygen. These atoms acts as the catalyst. Which atoms? Chlorine radical act as the catalyst and it is not consumed in the reaction. So again for the next reaction it will be available and it will degrade the ozone. So whatever chlorofluorocarbon are added to the stratosphere, they have permanent and continuing effect on ozone levels because why? Because the chlorine radical is not 
consumed in the reaction. It is always available. Ozone depletion is not occurring only on the Antarctica. It occurs all over the atmosphere. But over the Antarctica it is particularly noticed. It is marked there which has resulted in the formation of a large area of thin ozone layer known as the ozone hole. We can see it in the figure. Now ultraviolet radiations of wavelength which are shorter than the ultraviolet B radiations. They are almost completely absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere provided the ozone layer is intact. Ozone layer is not disintegrated. But ultraviolet B radiations damages DNA and protein and mutation may occur there. So, the mutations will produce aging of skin, they will cause damage to the skin cells and they may produce various types of skin cancers. In human eye, cornea absorbs ultraviolet B radiations and a high dose of ultraviolet B radiations causes inflammation of cornea which is known as snow blindness or cataract etc disease are produced in the eyes. So, these exposures may permanently damage the cornea. Now, knowing these harmful or deleterious effect of the ozone depletion, an international treaty known as Montreal Protocol was signed at Montreal. Where is Montreal my dear students? It is located in Canada. And when was the Montreal Protocol was signed? It was signed in 1987 and it became effective since 1989. It was formed to control the emission of ozone depleting substances. We have seen the harmful effect of the ozone depletion. So, this uh, treaty was organized. Subsequently, many more efforts have been made and protocols are laid down which provide definite road maps separately for developed countries and separately for developing countries. Now, let us see how to deal with the global warming. What are our approaches? First of all, there will be reduction in the greenhouse gas emission by limiting the use of fossil fuels. And in place of fossil fuels, we will make use of alternative renewable sources of energy. We will have to make use of wind energy and solar energy etc. Increase the vegetation cover, particularly the forest area so that rate of photosynthesis can be increased and there may be utilization of the carbon dioxide. We have to minimize the use of nitrogen fertilizer in agriculture so that we may reduce the nitrogen peroxide emission. We have to develop substitute for chlorofluorocarbons. In December 1977, Kyoto Protocol in Japan which included 175 countries to reduce the overall greenhouse gas emission at least 5 percent below the 1990 level and this commitment was to be completed by the period 2008 to 2012. Uh, my dear students, I hope you might have understood the lecture that was all about it. Thank you.